I don't even know where to begin to introduce my guest for today's episode. Camelia Mahal is her name, and she my life has become more magical since meeting her. Um, I'm meeting you. Yeah, today we're gonna have a really fun, special episode about being in the present. The present is a gift, hmm. right? Mm -hmm. How to be in the now, but how hard is it to be in the now? And I can confess, I was even unable to be in the now as much as I am in the now since meeting her. And here's how we got to know each other. Camelia actually ended up staying at a place of mine while she was looking for a place. And she was there for over a month before we actually got a chance to connect and meet. And um, I'm on the beach. So, you know, we go on dog walks and it was so special. The laughter that would come up on our walks and the joy and just the ability to be out there. And I think it was a few walks before I said, Camelia, what do you do? <laughs> <laughs> like, Camelia, what's your last name? Camelia, what do you do? If you Camelia, mind? what's your last name? Yeah. <laughs> Camelia, what's your last name? Camelia, what do you do? And, well, what did you say? Well, before I tell you what I say, you know what I think is very interesting that I've been noticing? The way we met each other was very organically. Even though I came to rent your place, you didn't know my last name. You didn't know who I was. You don't know what I do or what I don't do. But our energetic fields met. And we were met in a really beautiful way because we were out in nature, which heals, and with our puppies. And we were able to meet each other just raw. So we didn't have to put any labels, titles, who I am, what I know, what I have. So over time, it got to allow itself to actually blossom like a flower, to have its beautiful fragrance came up. Because we've had some really interesting issues that even came up down the line that I said, oh, I felt triggers from you. But we'll get to that later. You want to know what I do, right? I just is noticing that. I love it. So my parents... I was born to an, a Tibetan mother and my father's Sikh, even though he doesn't practice. Uh, my father and mother introduced me to all religions. They had me in private schools. They had me going to Gudwaras. They had me just doing everything. But as a child, I told my parents about my parents from my past life. So I had crazy memories of my childhood and I could do things that, you know, they say Mozart and all these people have carried on their lineages from past lives because energy never dies. So my parents had me in everything from tap dancing to horseback riding. I played competitive tennis. Um, my brother's a pro tennis and ranked in the world. They got me into acting. And so I became into yoga and meditation because it was my lineage. But all these things were just titles of what I was. And then I started to hook myself on titles like, oh, I'm a TV actress. Uh, your credits say who you are, who you've worked with. So I've slowly started to learn because I was going to give you my bio. And I said, oh, I was going to give you a blank page. Okay. So I'm going to, yeah. So before I do a podcast, I email people and say, can you please send me your bio and, you know, a headshot so I can tell listeners a little bit about you. And she laughed. I said, do you have your bio? She's like, yeah. Uh, well, I was just going to, joke. I mean, that's who I was. That's not who I am. And how apt for an episode on presence for her to say, I'm here. Hmm. I'm just here. I'm me. I don't need this thing. And I, I thought that was really powerful. Hmm. There's this famous Indian mystic who died, Mansoor. And he said, when you bury me, put my hands outside of the coffin. And they're like, why? Why put your hands outside the coffin? And he said, because I want to show I take nothing with me. None of this makes anything. This, working in the top three chakras, and especially the seventh, the crown connecting to source, this is energetically what I am. Because even Nikola Tesla says, we are energy, vibration, and frequency. So therefore, if I attune this instrument so fine that I can connect to these consciousness, like infinite consciousness, 
I can become frequencies and energy. I, it goes beyond what words or titles do because this is why we see so much sadness in the world right now. We're chasing so many titles, so many numbers, and they feel empty. Yeah. That really resonates. And I've seen so many people who come to me to build their businesses and it's actually, we strip away all the titles they want. And, and I, this was me. So for the longest time, my motivation to build my business was so that other people would, because I, I was not a good student. I was sort of the unimpressive one in my family growing up. I had all these, I had two impressive brothers and an impressive sister when I was young. And so nobody expected anything of me. So for the longest time, I wanted to build a business so that I had a title. So that I could say I was a successful blah, so that I could blah, <laughs> blah, you know, um, so that I could claim that as somehow being worthy and the journey to humorously, the journey to creating a successful business. And I'm definitely on the journey. Mm -hmm. um, I stopped caring about what other people would think of me or doing it so that I would validate myself and for the titles. And it's funny, I've since given up almost every goal, <laughs> which is hilarious for a goal trainer. And so many things are floating into my existence. And so it's just been by, but my goal has been to be more present mm -hmm. and to be more connected to my body. So some of the things that Camellia has taught me, um, we've worked a little bit on breathing, really about honoring the physical experience. Yes. You want to speak to a little bit about those interests of yours? So my father's a mystic in India and I usually live there four months out of the year. And I live a very different life than say when I'm on a TV series. I'm in a village, I'm barefoot. There's Gujars, which are um, Muslim goat herders, even though my father has no religion and he's based Sikh. There's a lot of caste subdivision in India. My father kills out all the ca uh, caste system. He endorses women's rights. He teaches them how to be strong. He teaches them crafts. He teaches them journeys. He teaches them to stick up for themselves. Like my father's really breaking molds. So my father started teaching me meditations because I was really scared to die. I was scared. I was so scared to let go of this physical body. And so he had me start doing meditation techniques that Buddha had his disciples doing in India. And slowly, slowly, slowly through breathing meditations, watchfulness, mindfulness, conscious eating, like learning how to actually chew my food for the nutrients and chew it so much that it becomes water for my digestion. Cause this is your first mind, right? So this is my gut instinct. I don't trust this thing. This thing is crazy. This thing is like, yes, yes, yes. No, no, no. Up, up, up. High, high, high. More, more, more. Less, less. But this will tell me, oh, I feel really good. Oh, I don't feel really good. Oh, you're not paying attention to me. Oh, I feel unsafe. You know what I mean? Oh, I, I, I could use some affection. This thing will tell me exactly what I need, right? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Nice. <laughs> well, we do know the gut has, you know, that's pretty smart. Oh, so smart. Well, think about it. Like when we come out of the womb, this is our first source to connection to our mother. So like being in water. So we came out of the water source. Then we had the connection to earth through like a tube. This thing, this little thing connects us to everything. It's like Care Bears, like shine bright. <laughs> but what what's on my mind right now so since i'm being in the present mm. i'll say it mm. uh is that wasn't always the case for you i mean i know we're going to get into talking about some breathing and some nutrition things that um and maybe we'll share a bit of you know i'll just share what you know my mom my mom worked with camellia she did camellia does work with people to help them really come in come into themselves and as a birthday gift to my mother, who turned 82 this year, mm. I gifted uh, some sessions with Camellia. And I don't know what they did during those sessions. I heard like breathing, laughing. I don't know what else. But my mother awoke. It was like the light went on in her eyes. 
in a way that I hadn't seen in years. And so mm. I knew that something really special was going on. And we took another one of our walks mm -hmm. in the forest. Yeah, it was really special. Thank you. Thank you. What a gift. I and... love your mom. Sorry. <laughs> And she's, of course, going to listen, <laughs> hear us saying all these nice things. But I asked her and Camellia said, well, no, it wasn't always like that. I used to have a really fractured relationship with taking care of my body, food. You smoked. I smoked cigarettes. I hated my parents. I wished I would die on bridges and they would collapse on me. I constantly thought I had physical symptoms and diseases that I didn't have um, because I was so disconnected from myself. I like to self-sabotage. Like... I had such a pain, high pain tolerance to like, they pull my teeth out without even numbing my body and my mouth. So I learned how to disassociate from my body because I had so much trauma in it. And because I believe in past births and lies too, I probably energetically called on these energies, attracted them for this birth so I could heal them and then spread the energy to other people too. But, you know, like Buddha says, there is no coming to consciousness without suffering. So we must keep on suffering until we become so conscious that even when suffering's around, we're conscious. We're not suffering. And we're not suffering. Yeah. And I had to break that, that mold. I, I did everything. I smoked like seven to 10 joints a day. I drank 10 to 12 double Crown and Cokes. Um, I was lucky I never got into hardcore drugs because something that, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was the clue. Yeah. That inner voice in me always said, don't, it'll be the end. For you, you, that wasn't the way to go. Yeah, because that would be a different kind of mysticism. That wouldn't be so, yeah. Well, I just knew going into those types of heavy drugs and being able to break those habits or going so far, I wouldn't have turned back. But you, you also with food, like you were describing some of the things you ate, like weird meals, like weird meals. Like sometimes I wouldn't eat a bit, like I could not eat for five, six days and I just could eat a couple bananas because it wasn't even that I had a hunger and I was cutting my hunger out. I just didn't want to give this vessel any nutrition or love because yeah. there was no self-love. And then I binge. Sometimes I go into 8,000 calories. Like it's actually kind of scary where I can just nonstop eat and then I get all these digestion problems, brain fog, candida starts coming in, all this stuff. I was an extremist because I was either like really, really highs or really, really lows. But when I found the center, I found the present. Okay. So I bet you there's a lot of people listening right now who'd like to find the center of highs and lows in something in their life, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's eating one way or another, or moving towards something and then stopping um, all of those extremes, more, 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 less, 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 all of those things that you were talking about. What are some of the things you did to come and find your center? Let me ask you what you did, because you've had some habits. I have, I will share. But I know that we're here to learn. Sure, I'll tell you. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so let me tell you. I um, would always give myself dates that I'll quit things. Never happens because it's mine. Okay, I'm not going to smoke in 30 days from now. <laughs> right? Wait, you know how things go, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm, not... okay. 30 days. <laughs> I'm going to cut down four this week, another six next week, another 12 the week after. Boom. Or it'd be, oh, I'm not going to smoke tonight and I'll just smoke on weekends. You name it, every, the mind has all these skills. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 all right. I'm going to map it out, you <laughs> yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, map it, all right. So I tried every scheme in my brain. None of these things happened. And then I said to my father, like, my, my mother and father, like, don't touch anything, okay? My mom has two beers a year. My father, maybe one beer every five years. They never drank. They never smoked things. Like, they didn't have any addictions. It skipped a generation to me. So... My father said to me, don't say you're going to quit because as soon as you tell the mind, Camellia, you're going to quit, it's going to do the opposite. As soon as you repress something, it comes up even more because you're hiding it, Camellia. You can't hide things. He said, instead, do this. Okay. When you smoke it, really smoke it. We mean really smoke it from a non-smoker, right? Before you light that cigarette, he said, watch where your state of mind was. When you light it, watch yourself. Become the watcher. Watch yourself smoke. Really enjoy it. 
Watch you going in your lungs. Watch you going out of your lungs. Be very present and conscious when you do it. Slowly over time, I start seeing smoke car fumes that come here. It starts tasting like gasoline. When I'm smoking, even when I'm angry and I've gone to my habit. Yeah, go ahead. This is triggering me. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, this is triggering me because I used to smoke. Yeah. And it's actually triggering a gag reflex. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, and what happened, it's interesting, what great advice really smoke. And I think I did it by accident one day. So I quit smoking and then I had, you know, a, a boyfriend who still smoked and I like, I didn't care. And I still sort of liked the smell. And then from time to time I'd have one. And then we, I, I know I was on the 36th floor. This was the year that I had my car accident actually. Mm. So I'm the 36th floor. We had a balcony that was pretty windy. Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. And then we would make people sort of go out there and smoke. And I remember, you know, I used to have these smoke hangovers, like I'd have a cigarette and then the next day I'd pay for it. And every time I would have a cigarette, it would get worse. So we had some friends over, we were having drinks. I went on the balcony. I probably had a couple of cigarettes out there. And the next day I, it was like the worst hangover. And I think it's because I really felt the effects of it in my body mm. and I really for some reason that day connected with what this was doing inside me and it was so revolting I have never had a puff since like never had a desire never had I was just like Ugh. so you were just going about all this I was like oh no 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 <laughs> yes yes, yes <laughs> you're yes, triggering yes. me yes a gag reflex like not you know just like oh yeah no it's body sense my memory body is like to the gut like I said it tells you everything it has sense memory it's so intelligent this body okay so you you smoked the cigarette so you got rid of the cigarette so then slowly 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 I stopped judging myself and instead of saying, oh, you're going to get cancer, quit, or oh, this, I stopped judging myself. I started becoming really present in my moments. I wasn't checking my phone all the time. I wasn't worried about this. Like when I was talking to people, I'd really start zoning and focusing. I'd be everywhere I was in my present moments. And because I did that, I became conscious because I became alert. My mind silenced down and I could really be her. So I let go of the past. I stopped projecting to the future. I could be here. So I could make conscious decisions in every moment I was mind, body, soul. It takes time. Okay. We're going to come to conscious decisions now because we're talking, this is a podcast about the present. Yes. So I'm not allowed to say we're allowed to come to that later. Oh my God. See, <laughs> I learned so fast. You're so I'm good. Master. <laughs> You're so good. You are your own master. We're all born our own masters. Yeah, yeah, we are. You are. Actually, I really do want to say that we are our own master. Mm -hmm. um, I I do agree that you have the power within you beyond what you realize. And sometimes we can be around people who help us bring out our mastery. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Okay. So I noticed I was about to put off something, but because this is an episode about the present and she mentioned about making conscious decisions, Camelia is all about choice. One of the things she's all about, one of the things, but one of the things that I've seen her do to help you, you, me, my mom, people she works with find their consciousness is offer choices. Mm -hmm. I love choices. I love choices. <laughs> you love choices. I love options. <laughs> options. Not stock options. I don't play those, <laughs> those things or mining or anything, but I like options. I love options. And people yeah. say, oh, that's mind. But it's not. And it's not pre-planning. It says to myself or with someone, you're not just fixated on one point your life or a journey or energetic field can take so many different directions in this situation you instead of looking at so one way we open up the mind to a cosmic cosmic infinite way of looking at things so you can keep on raising your frequency and choosing the best choices for you because people will come to me i'm not here to tell people what to do i say to them these are your options You've stated your options, choose one that suits you best, but always make sure you choose something that's the kindest, the most loving, the most healthiest, the most conscious for the environment, self, 
others and you'll be fine. But others is a situ- situation too, because you have to think of first for others. When I say others, I mean like that you don't have anyone in harm's way or anything like that, but the main things, you know what I mean? But self always has to come first because too much we're living for other people and they're wearing masks too. So we're just concealing all of this stuff. And then we think we're making cause conscious choices, but we're doing it outside of self and it's not even self choices. Yeah, I want to go into that a little bit more because I know from my work with people how much of a struggle there is around doing it for me or doing it for others. Mm. And so I know when you're saying doing it for others, something in the good of humanity, Mm. um, but there is that piece around make sure it's good for others. Can you speak a little bit more to that? Like when you're doing something that's good for yourself and let's say you're planning a, you know, a move in your job or maybe you're even your physical location Mm -hmm. and it's not good for everyone. Mm -hmm. You have had a recent experience with that. How how do you reconcile good for me, good for others? Or how do you approach it? I've done a lot of childhood traumatic wound healing, right? And past lives. So I'm able to see things at a different level now where I told you, I I go from a gut feeling. So things are a lot simpler, but I let go of mind and I make a conscious decision because if all of a sudden I'm thinking, what's Sally going to be thinking? Or if I'm thinking in terms of money, I'm thinking about things outside of me. If I go inside and close my eyes and just deep breathe really slowly, I'll know how I feel. And truth will always set me free and set them free. And it's always going to be for the better good of others. If it's my truth, because if I'm lying to myself, I'm lying to you. And that's the worst thing we can do because now it's a mask covering to another mask. And all these things are just boiling. Oh yeah. You know, what's interesting when I used to be a communications trainer in organizations, one of the things that surprised me, especially in the beginning was, you know, I would write before I was a trainer and I was like a student going, my communications are a mess, help. Okay. So, um, they said to, you know, there was, I remember this question, are you the kind of person who blows up when something goes wrong? Or are you the kind of person who goes quiet? Mm. And, you know, a bunch of people in the hand in the room were like, oh, I blow up. Right. And, but I very haughtily, very haughtily, I'm the kind of person who goes quiet because I am better than somebody who blows up. And they said, well, actually, uh, psychologically speaking, they're both violent reactions. (laughs) Uh Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Because it really picks up on what you were saying. Not speaking your truth is as aggressive to the quality of a relationship as yelling your truth Mm -hmm. and maybe even more so I it was like it was this mind-blowing moment for me because after that I worked with a number of people who um were Italian and you know there's no problem like (laughs) just saying what's on their mind but (laughs) my mom which was great and I was like oh wow and it was so good that I started to learn how to speak up in a way that was kind and with love. And if it's what you said, it's not my truth. It's not their truth. Mm -hmm. And I just, I don't know if that, that just reminded me of the fact that when we're not speaking our truth or being in our truth, how is it possible that that is for the good Mm -hmm. of someone else? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I have to create a lie to you. So I've started a lie in me a white lie and it'll carry on here. It's going to carry on down here. It's going to carry on here. And then sooner than later, Oh, I found the feather here. Sooner or later, it's all just going to become one mask. All over me. Life has to be, we have to live so pure. People don't understand. Oh, white lies, little lies, things. Once we live within our energetic being of how we're supposed to be to tell the truth or not tell the truth, doesn't even come in. Like it just doesn't even register in there. Cause you're, you're so in your purity, like it and everything. And you know, what's interesting too, is everything on the outside world flows a lot smoother because even if people aren't hearing or understanding you, 
your vibrational way is unconsciously triggering something to shift in them that's opening up something. And I don't push my thoughts on them either because they have every right to feel the way they feel too. So I just say, hey, I'm feeling this way and I'm coming from here let's meet somewhere where we can actually communicate this. And then we find something we can co-create. Absolutely. And I think that's, I did want to, cause I know so many people all the time, not, I mean, this happens to me every day. I work with clients. Mm-hmm. It's like, this is my truth, but this person in my life is not their truth. And so I think that's a big thing. One of the things I wanted to make sure we had time for today yeah. is, breathing mm-hmm. because I think you're a great breathing teacher and I think we know that breathing helps us be in the moment mm-hmm. can you teach me something about breathing okay let me teach us all something about breathing oh, here we just yeah. cool for time so you're okay for time yeah yeah we're good okay so you know the body has seven chakras probably has more should I sit differently Sure, sit down next to me so you can get comfy. Okay. Do you want to sit? And your body will tell you where your breath is. Like today, I can tell you're a little tensed and you're halfway in the stomach. It's not a deep belly breath like when you've had a day off yet. What ideas can you give them to join our state? No problem. So as long as they're not driving and they're seated comfortably, I'd like them to slowly start breathing in the nose. And when they breathe in, it's not going to be a, it's going to be a very gradual inhale for four breaths. At the top, they'll hold it for four breaths. And when they let it out of the nose, it's going to be four breaths. And then they'll start breathing in again for four. Hold for four. Release for four. And the only objective here, which there is no objection, uh, objection, excuse me, objective, is just to breathe as deeply below your belly button as you can. And if thoughts come, just watch them like a movie. Just let them pass. It's in silence where we connect to our true God. And we connect to the breath. We connect our true self and we connect to the totality of existence. Now you had a really neat activity you had for me once, which was to breathe into this lower abdomen. Mm -hmm. But while the breath was in my body, while I was holding for four, it didn't just stay in one place. You had me send it up to my brain. Mm -hmm. To the crown chakra above. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You actually had me send it to my third eye. I, yes. So I remember you saying, so it was like moving around. Mm -hmm. And then as I was breathing out to imagine it coming out my third eye, as I breathed out. Do I remember that correctly? Yes. So once you breathe really deeply like that for four breaths and you slowly, because it takes a while for the body to relax just normally. After some time, what you can do is you can slowly breathe in the nose, hold it for one, just picture your third eye. And as you release, just keep your focus on the third. So you're really breathing deep in the belly in. It takes great focus to keep the focus on the third eye. First, many people don't see anything. Sometimes people see a light blue light start to crack. And then over due time, you get sacred geometry shapes and visions and all these things. Most of our third eyes are calcified. So there's a whole way of conscious eating and living too that clears that. Can you share some of those things? What are some conscious eating and living things we can do? Spring water is very important because it has magnesium, calcium, about 75 to 100 other minerals for us. By using toothpaste without fluoride or SLS, SLS is what they use to scrub gasoline off of 
car automotive shops. Uh, fluoride's a bioweapon, so this calcifies the third eye. So if you can get a natural toothpaste without any of these things and fragrances, a clean diet. It's very. I cannot stress how much it means to the mind, body, and soul to eat a diet that's rich in nutrients, uh, preferably from a farm, uh, as close to nature and as fresh as possible because the body already works so hard in this world. So we have to do a lot of detoxing and purification so that we can connect to this energy and keep it going. And once you have it there, it's easy to maintain. It's just the beginning phases for all of us take some time. So the cleaner water you can drink, the more you can be in nature, the cleaner you can eat and diet, the more conscious you can be while you're eating your food, all of these things will energetically shift your way of being in life and what you attract. So you were teaching my mom some different breathing activities mm -hmm. and I know she brought them into her life and I know that she said, I used to have such a hard time with meditation and I tried meditation so, so many times and now I'm getting notes from her saying, oh, I'm out going out this morning to a rose garden. She lives near a rose garden and I'm going out to the rose garden to meditate in the rose garden. Mm. And she was really surprised by how easy it was to meditate outside comparatively to meditating inside is that her experience or have you noticed that with other clients or or yourself i always take clients on experiences so if clients live near me or i have some clients that come to me when i lived in vancouver and they'll come to me here they fly in and they see me because i i can tell people's energetic shifts where they breathe where they don't breathe how they eat what they don't eat how their digestion is i can just tell all this stuff so when they come to me i'm able to teach them specific meditation techniques according to their body's patterns and things to release. And then your mother came to me because I said to her the first time, she said, you know, Camelia, when I went outside on the deck, it was so much easier. She goes, why? Because I took her out for the first session. I said, let's go out. You had us go for a dog walk. And then I said for our second session, let's do it outside. Because in nature is when you connect to yourself. The oxygen is cleaner. We don't have all these things, phones, clocks, distractions. So I take people on experiences and these experiences energetically rewire them from forest bathing to salt water to you name it. And it lets people just be because nature doesn't judge either. And there's no clock in nature. Earlier, you, I asked you a question. I said, you know, how did you go from being unconscious to being conscious? And you said, well, Jill, you tell me, how did you do it? I'm ready to answer that now. Oh, thanks. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Present. <laughs> well, because you said there's no clocks in nature. And that brought it back into the present. Mm. Because you said, I used to plan or I'm going to quit smoking in 30 days. Like there's all this time pressure. And so there's, there's a bit of a comedy here, um, cosmic comedy <laughs> that, you know, I spent so long, you know, I do, I have a very forward thinking way of setting goals that's based in neuroscience that I teach because what we need to set our hot goals, which are the things we do without thinking, they're the things we do unconsciously. Ultimately, we want to move anything that's good for us to the unconscious automation system. Hmm. And so I got really into that. And then I got really into planning. I was like, oh, and I learned behavioral science and I figured all of that out. But I would say that I have rapidly, that helped me, right? It helped me get on the path and learn things that I cognitively needed to understand in order to succeed. And it's in the release of all of that, that I have found some of the best, you know, so the path itself. And I was telling my, you know, I have a, I have a business mastermind. People come to me to help them with their businesses. Mm -hmm. And I was telling them a couple of days ago that I'm like, Oh, I have no goals for my business. <laughs> I have no goal. I mean, I'm like, 
who does this? Who has a company without, you know, because I, I literally made my living <laughs> helping people create vision and strategy. And I have that, but I have no numeric goals. I have mm. no time frame. I don't care. Mm. <laughs> what I care about is doing as much good and having as much fun as possible. I was working with a client yesterday. Uh, I also, like you, Camelia, I mean, this is something for us all to think about, but people come to me to figure out their what's next mm. when they really, especially when they want to be heart centered and aligned with their, you know, I use the term God, but universe purpose, God purpose, whatever that is. And somebody I was working with is leaving a long time in corporate at a very high profile job for a very high profile company. And now we're planning the next way forward. We also do it in the forest with no time. And mm -hmm. it's amazing. We just hang out mm -hmm. and it's amazing how quickly things come together after people have wondered about this for years. And it's like, what, one day, seriously, we're done. How is that possible? And as we parted ways yesterday, it was so funny because it was, there was all these pressures um, that he's under from some different places and mm -hmm. time and whatever. And mm -hmm. I just said, Oh, by the way, I give you permission to do everything whenever it feels good to you. So perfect. You have permission now mm -hmm. to do everything on your schedule. And I know mm -hmm. that those people listening might go, well, you might say that, but I don't have that right now in my life. You know, I'm not in a place because people who are like, you know, where am I getting next month's rent? I'm or, like that too, though. I give away 90% of my money. People think I'm crazy. I, I, where's it coming? My father always says, just existence. You're here right now. Surrender. It's all this unlearning. You just nailed it. My father says, Camelia, you've done all this learning. Now it's time to unlearn. That's where I'm at now. I'm like, <laughs> all my goals have been replaced with love fun, mm. health. Mm. It's the best stuff. I mean, who doesn't benefit from that? Yes. <laughs> who doesn't, you know, and it is fun for me to do my work. So why, Jill, if you, you know, if you're just having fun, why are you sitting there doing your podcast? This is fun. And people don't understand. This is fun. This is fun. This and is work fun. doesn't have to be work. <laughs> work can be play and still yield results, even though you're not looking for results in this worldly world, it'll give you even more abundance because you don't have expectation and these stresses that come with it. You just surrender it. You co-create it and release the baby. And then everything just flows. It's like sparkle dust because it finds you. It's like, ooh, I love that energy. Okay, so I'm gonna ask this on behalf of somebody listening. I know there's someone listening who's going, oh, sounds great. How do I do that? First thing you have to become the watcher. Okay. You have to know thyself like you like the back of your hand, the habits, the triggers, the addictions, the sadness. Spend a lot of time alone. We're scared to be alone in this world. We're taught to hoard in masses or get things to take us off our mind. Really get to know yourself. Connect to nature. Walk barefoot in the sand. Swim in oceans laugh. If you see the elderly lady, hold the door for her. Ask people who they are. But don't attach yourself to labels, titles, and things. Slowly release all these stories that you've created for yourself so you can become a blank canvas. And every moment I'm creating my biography of who I am because I'm limitless. I'm, an in, I'm infinite. I'm like a child of the universe. Everything that exists in the star exists in the human body how can't we shine oh wow right like can you imagine everything that exists in a star is in the human body is in the human body every single element tell me more if you go look at the table of contents that exists in a star every single thing from your calcium to your you name it every element is in this body how can't you shine? Wow. Yeah. We all came here at different energetic fields and reasons because it's God living through us as a cosmic energy. Like God is living through you as your being. 
God is living through me as my being. We're just here to raise our frequency as high as we can so that when it's time to go, we just, we don't die. We just transform into another energy because energy never dies. Yep. I mean, I believe that. I don't know if, uh, I definitely believe that. And I, I know that I've seen that in my existence over, it's been demonstrated to me. I think each person discovers that. Mm. I love start with watching. Mm. Because that's the consciousness over who you're being. Mm -hmm. What am I choosing? Mm -hmm. If you can't even face yourself, if you don't even know yourself, how are you going to know your wife? How are you going to know your best friend? How are you going to truthfully connect to your dog? You have to know the self so well that you're your own best friend, that you've fallen in love so much with yourself. People are just like swarmed to you because they feel this energetic feel. They don't know what it is. But it's just this being is just so present. So it starts with watching, mm -hmm. knowing myself. Mm -hmm. And you talked about, you know, Camellia, really, the advice from your father, really smoke that cigarette. Yeah. Did you do the same thing with food? I had to learn discipline. The word discipline comes from disciple. I'm no one's disciple except for universe's disciple. <laughs> um, I believe in all religions and I actually do many practices. Discipline is super important. I had to be accountable for me. I had to slowly start being like, hey, wait a second. Camellia is stuffing herself with 16 cupcakes in a row. Her stomach is in severe pain. Where did this come? Oh, childhood triggers would go. Oh, I played tennis really good. I got a donut. Oh, when I was a good girl, sugar sufficed me and gave me that sweetness. I felt sweetness inside, a sweetness for myself. I slowly started teaching myself tricks. Oh, I can have a little bit less. Oh, I can have honey instead. Why don't I have fruit? Oh, wait a second. Camellia is going to the food because Camellia doesn't feel sweet about Camellia. Well, let's sit in this moment. Why does Camellia need something outside of Camellia for Camellia to feel sweet? Why can't Camellia just be good enough as Camellia? Why does Camellia have to kill herself with things that are physically giving her symptoms. Why is Camellia doing this to herself? This is beautiful. This is simply beautiful. When I, this really is coming full circle from where we started because I talked about, or not somewhere in the middle, it doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> somewhere in the conversation, I was talking about how I used to be motivated by, built, to build a business so that people would say, good girl, Jill. That was like my sweetness, right? You're not dumb. It was You're, outside validation. It was Something outside always validation. Always outside of self. And then I let that, you know, I think it was, it doesn't matter when, I let it go. Mm. And <laughs> like, I'm just getting over the concept of time actively. <laughs> um, but I love what you said about, I think that's really fresh. I think mm. the, con, you know, the sweetness like, oh, you did really well at tennis. Here's a donut. Um, so then that became this exterior validation for doing something good. And this is almost a danger of a reward system. Pavlov's dog, you just picked up my thought. Pavlov's yeah. dog, you, you did good, so let me run. <laughs> yeah. Zone me out. Zone me out. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> I think it's really powerful, Camelia. What a message. I, I mean, I think just to take, I think someone could take a year with that message mm -hmm. and it, it would continue to be valuable. Mm -hmm. It's so powerful. How do we learn to just be good with ourselves? Mm -hmm. to say, I love you to myself. Mm -hmm. I don't need the cookie or the bell or the donut. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it's amazing. Like I came here to be no one for anyone but myself. And when I do that, I'm the best thing for all of existence. And so am I. Yes. And listeners, so are you. Yes. You are the best thing for all existence, right? You wouldn't be here. Yes. You wouldn't be here if you weren't the best thing for all existence. And existence needs you. You know, like even if an ant dies, 
the universe feels it. Like we all need each other. We are the best things to be when we are our best within. Yeah. So this, I think, um, oh, time. I got to get to a coffee date <laughs> across town. And we live in a very small place, so that's not far. <laughs> I was daydreaming we were somewhere else. There I was an illusion, Maya. <laughs> I think let's tell listeners where they can learn. I mean, we'll have links in the show notes so you can find Camellia online and maybe explore, explore reaching out to her. If you want to come more into, I think if you want to be more into yourself, more be into your presence, but more than that, be into your you. Mm. Yeah, like when your mother came to me, I'm not going to go into details. There was childhood things. We had to go to the root. I don't treat symptoms. Yeah. I go to the root. Thank you so much for this amazing, amazing time in your friendship. You have been such a godsend to me in so many ways during this journey. And I thank you in existence for all these experiences. I thank you too. You are really someone who's inspirational for what you've allowed into your life and the change that you've overcome. And I was so excited to share you with the Thinking Vitamins listeners that they might grab what's right for them at this time and integrate it into their way of being. Mm -hmm. But you are fun. You laugh. You have a good time. <laughs> yeah, I have a great time. My wish for Camellia, <laughs> she, you know, people work with her in person. And my wish for Camellia is that more people see how fun this work can be. Because I think that's, I'm going to wrap up by saying you really bring a levity and joy and playfulness to it <laughs> that makes you go, why would I want to do anything else than get into my present, my now, my me, because when it's, and I think that's very special. And the reason I wanted, I, I will wrap by saying the reason I wanted to bring Camellia on the Thinking Vitamins podcast is because there's many people um, including, you know, myself or many people out there. And we are all finding different ways of being true joy from within. And I think very unique to you is that you bring joy to minute one of the process. Mm -hmm like minute number one. It's not something, and we've talked about this on Thinking Vitamins before, it's not something, we're not dangling some reward at the end of a stick. Mm -hmm. And you did speak about the, the was it the Buddha who said we go through... There is no coming to consciousness without suffering. There's no coming to consciousness without suffering. And yet... And yet mm. the situation with my mother does show something different, mm. which is, and me, mm. and what I've learned from you in our friendship is that we can also come to consciousness with laughter. And so maybe yes. there will be some suffering, but it doesn't need to be as much as we think. No. It doesn't need to be all suffering. And uh. there can be a lot of laughs. And, you know, listeners, that's why I wanted you to meet Camellia, because I wanted you to know that there's a lighthearted <laughs> way forward. Oh, yes. And it's the healthiest way. And I started, I have a spiritual um, website called The Journey Begins Within. And once you heal, even through healing, you have laughter. And then once you're on this trajectory, it's basically all a joke. Even when the bad stuff happens, you're like, oh, okay, universe. Yeah. It's just comical. You know, I know how we're going to finish up. So we're going to finish up now. Yeah. And normally then we cut to the awesome thinking vitamins jingle, right? Which is so good. But this today, what we're going to do is we're going to put some of the outtakes from when we started. Oh, no. <laughs> because <laughs> there are some really funny outtakes. And I just, yeah, so that they can see a little BTS behind the scenes. Um, so I think we'll cut to the outtakes and let them watch me learning your name. <laughs> Thank you for putting so many people into the universe. Thank you for sharing everyone's talents. You're doing a magnificent job. And thank you for caring about people who 
have such a voice, but don't know how to get in there to share and express it. Thank you for giving people this vision. I'm honored. Thanks, Joe. Thank you. Thank you. What is your last name? <laughs> no, you gotta, you gotta fucking put that in there. <laughs> Mahal. I knew that. No, I didn't know that. Okay. I should know that. Like the talk. I, I asked Camelia, Mahal. <laughs> like, I don't even know. Like, I, it's just like, so, okay. Camelia Mahal. Kiki, Camelia Mahal. Am I saying yeah. that? <laughs> this is getting spicy. <laughs> we welcome you to create some social media posts with that. Um, welcome to that one. <laughs> Jill, you have to do that. Please, you have to ask me. What's okay. your last name? Thanks so much for listening to this episode of the Thinking Vitamins podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to like, comment, follow, and come to thinkingvitamins.com where you can sign up to get our newsletter and additional free training. Thinking Vitamins with Jill McKay.